there's, you know, it's amazing when you uh, really start thinking about us being here, how incredibly uh, orchestrated by the Lord from heaven that that has been. And I thought that word was very interesting for Cheryl, you know, because my family had quarter horses and we had race horses. And you don't ride either one of them the same. You have to actually learn to ride each one of them. And it's, a, it's an art. It's, a, it's an incredible uh, training. And, and you have to let a racehorse run. And so what causes a movement to move forward is letting go of the reins of it. And uh, that's our hardest thing we have is letting go so that we are just going with the wind. Look at somebody and say, we're going to learn to go with the wind. Aaron, if you'll go ahead. I don't have the same one that I did on the... Uh, see, a new movement has begun in this era. It's a new era, and I think we always have to understand that God looks for a new movement. And faith works in time and in place. It just doesn't work with us wandering around saying we believe. God always will meet us in time and place. That's what Acts 17 is about. He's going to make sure you have to be at some place at some time so that the two of you meet together for covenant purposes. And he predetermines your time and your place. And at that time and at that place when you're at the right place at the right time is where all of a sudden he extends the horizon line. Now with that and because a new era has begun we have to understand that we are living in an era of warfare. An era is different than a season. An era is when a historical shift occurs. Now again that occurred in September of 2019. And since that, that time, we have all been through much war. And war just simply means conflict. It's not something that we fear. It's not something that we back away from. It is linked with conflict. Most of my books are linked with the understanding of the war ahead, prophetically, because when God visited me in 1986, he showed me in 10-year increments through 2026. So I've written several books about that, especially China's role. We've been to China many times since then. And uh, one of the things I saw happen in 2020 was God removing us from being in China because China now is taking a different stand in the warhead, and it affects America greatly. And so, with that, we have to understand that in this era of war, there is great resistance against Holy Spirit advancing. Now, put your hand on somebody, and that means it's resistance against you. And I, I think sometimes the body of Christ is very naive in uh, remembering that we carry the third person of the Godhead within us. And because we carry the third person of the Godhead, everything that is anti-God himself hits us to try to knock us back. And we have to always make sure that our spirit man is filled and moving forward. Now, that comes by us obeying. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of the Lord. And so, 
with that, there is this voice that's crying out from the earth. See, the earth has a voice. Scranton has a voice. And uh, there's something about us understanding that when the voice of the Spirit of God from the land gets loud enough, God responds to it. That was the whole principle of the first Passover, him creating it because after 400 years, the people finally got so tired of where their life was that they cried out. It says in Exodus chapter 2, they cried out so loudly, and it says God acknowledged their cry from the earth realm and responded because of his covenant. And that is what I see that has happened here. Some way or another, there has been enough crying out from the Scranton area area, that God responded from heaven to speak. And uh, that's why God speaks to us. He doesn't, Scranton isn't particularly in the Bible. It's just here in the earth realm, and God knows exactly where it is, and God knows why it's here, and he knows all the seeds of his third person, Holy Spirit, that has been sown in this area, and all of a sudden the voice came up to it. And because of that, he said, I'm ready to break some old cycles and make some new cycles. And so, once we hear what he's saying, we go to work, just as we heard this morning. Work, ergos, is a word that we need to understand. We have to go to work in the place that God has called us to go to work in. And that is why we're here. Then our role is to align the will of heaven. This is the Lord's Prayer. To get that portal open so God's will in heaven can surround our territory that he's assigned us to. Now, the beauty of John and Cheryl, once I had a dream, I knew I could send them to try to be with those who had been crying out. And my whole life has operated like that. And it's the whole principle of Macedonia and Paul hearing the call to Macedonia. And then having to let the Spirit direct him in time. And that's how we move still to this day in the earth. I see again our Rochester friends here with us. Rochester has great seeds of revival. Every time it gets very close to a breakthrough for total transformation, the enemy pushes back. And we have to know there's certain things. Paul said it this way to uh, the people of Thessalonica. He said, aren't you aware who's opposing you? See, sometimes I think we forget who's opposing you. I I think of Long Island. I, I, I think that was one of the very first places in New York I ever went to was Long Island. And uh, what God has said about Long Island, it, and see, it, 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 it makes us, it, just because we're not seeing it fully manifest doesn't mean he didn't say it. He said to Abraham, that promise, here's your boundaries, here's your promise, and here's all the enemies in it. It just took him 476 years to get someone in there to do it. And uh, look at somebody who said, he can outweigh us if we don't want to move. 